This Welcome one. back to the Mob Jazz Podcast. I'm Melvin. Magic. The voice. And today we are joined. <laughs> he was ready to introduce himself. <laughs> today we are joined by Michael Mike. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Angel Michael. Michael yeah. Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> we found out my Angel, Angel Michael is Michael Angelo, right? Yeah. Just found out. Yeah, we just had a good chat about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Listen, to, nice to be here, though. Bro, so glad to have yeah. you, man. So we're about to come to, to Kigali to, <laughs> to have you, have you bro, looking bro, for you, And that's man. not even a joke. We're literally <laughs> about to come to Kigali in a few months. Just You're not hit you, list. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's your first podcast, so it's a blessing. To love good that, life. man. Love that, love that, love that. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm not bad. Mm-hmm. Good to be back mm-hmm. showcasing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you excited coming back for blankets and wine? Yeah, mm-hmm. I am. I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's a different setting. Because I had a show last year. We were there. Mm. We were there. Like really... I mean, I'm sure compared to this, is a different energy and mm-hmm. other thing. Um, but I'm excited, bro. Now I'll give you, I'll give you the the Mike Ihura story from a concert last year. Later, yeah. bro, that one was that concert was something, man. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Have you heard anything about blankets and why? I've never. Mm-hmm. There was one that happened in Kigali. Ah, um, but nah, it was nothing close to what happens here. Because you guys said this is what the ninth. Mm. I mean, how many have happened? Maybe, maybe more. Even, maybe even more, bro. Because the oldest, right? like. It's the oldest like day concert. Yes, yes. So that's the, the thing. We've had only one. Okay. And and it's obviously from Kenya. Mm-hmm. They it's had one as well. So like, I was in Nairobi two weeks ago when I got there. It had just ended. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you guys have this festival culture thing that goes on, which is really dope. You know? we do, bro. And um, mm-hmm. hopefully it comes back home. But this is the first one I've attended that's away from from Kigali. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely okay. Really so zero expectations, zero. And I have no idea what it's gonna be like. So it's like, boom, let's go. Yeah. Okay, nice man. Yeah. I'll say black is my favorite. That's black. Like, that's what I think I'm gonna be my favorite event of the year, man. Because of the buddies. No, because I can day drink. <laughs> and uh, to be fair, <laughs> the buddies as well. You can day drink. Because there's buddies from 12 p.m. <laughs> midday, bro. <laughs> Till 12 a.m. <laughs> That's not Bro, where do all these girls be? And you'll man? never ever see them again. Yeah, they yeah, come in their Sunday days. Never. <laughs> they'll be there. Right. They were there at your last concert. Right. So I know there'll be some from that one that I'll yo, see again I this keep, time. I keep seeing that, you know, on the tweets. Yeah, hey, that oh. yo, that chicks from that concert. My were baddies. I'm like, wait. Now I remember. I remember <laughs> at that <laughs> concert. Take your backup. Your backup and the and the buddies. And the buddies. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Just turn the eye like snapping. Yeah. Well, while you can, while you perform, you can't see. Like, can you see the people in the crowd? So that's the thing, man. I'm not gonna lie, man. Last last the show last year. The show last year was definitely overwhelming for me, bro. I didn't expect that. Like, it's more of like. That was the first show that I ever did away from home. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've done a few shows home and maybe some. I did a few. I did a few in the UK, but this was the first one I did. Like, oh, it's it's Kampala is home technically as well. So I didn't expect that. I didn't expect people to show up for that. Mm. Um, so when it's like for me, I'm I get really I'm a very nervous performer, right? Okay. So for me, I I tend to get on stage with. Um, with that super nervous feel, but as soon as I'm there, it's just like it's the sounds. It's with me, you know. I don't really see much what's out there, unless I can get a little, you know. Ah, you have like that glimpse. Yeah. Have you guys had that like nervous blindness where you Yo, can't see? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually like you can't see, but well, you can't yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really <laughs> All see that one, yeah. you just like look straight into like the light or something. Yeah. You've never seen us perform to the light <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the back. You know? Yeah, no. let's go with the sound. Do you, yeah. do you get um to look at your analytics like from your streaming? Um, you mean like the numbers and everything? Yeah, yeah like is Uganda yeah. like a big demographic for you? Oh, it's crazy. Like the first project I dropped, which was 2019, uh, barely mixed. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I really started getting into what numbers is and analytics, and mm-hmm. and then I'm like, okay, I just started. That was my first project, so I just started understanding what DistroKid is, mm. and I check it out. Kampala was at the top, so I'm like, wait, how is that? How is that possible? And I check mm-hmm. Apple Music, so. Kampala was really the first place to really stream my stuff for real, bro. Mm. Like, really mixed was popping in Kampala for anywhere else. Even back home, they were just like, okay. The few people that could, that do stream music there, um, they were streaming it, but not like here. Not so like here. I was quite shocked too. It was like, wait, yeah, it Kampala really is listening to music. It was really crazy when I found out that that was your first show outside of Randa because mm. people were waiting for it here, like, Mike, 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 where's Mike? Bro, so I'd barely bro, mixed on repeat. You, you have no idea, that's bro. Crazy. No idea. That was a yeah, it's a special project for me because um, 
when I recorded it, I didn't have the funds for a studio session. I kept trying to put funds together, but it just didn't add up. I mean, as soon as it's close by, it's like, I just have something else to sort out. It's like, fuck, I can't do this. And I've written the songs, I've composed them, and I just um, got out of a contract with these guys I was working with in the UK. Um, we're doing, they were doing a management and publishing deal, and we had, we had sketched these tracks, right? But the good thing is I'd written them. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to record them live. I call my boy who records stuff, and I'm like, we're going to invite people over, free entrance, let's see who shows up. And people showed up. and recorded it live, one take, you know? And that made it yeah. sound Man, so yeah. fire, bro. It, it sounds yeah. like interludes, but it's really right. just like you stopping a song and starting <laughs> yeah. that next one. Literally, song. yeah. It's so hard. And then bro. we just cut the mic. and So we recorded the whole thing, and he just literally edited the cuts and just took out the, yeah. That's but it, it's a project that means a lot to me because it was a time where I was coming out of was kind of, like I said, a contract, and it took a while. I'd, I was in it t- since uh, I was 21, 22. Wow. And then by the time I recorded that, I was like, what, 27? I just got out of that contract. So that's another thing. It's, it's mentally draining because it's like you're going through a process. You see things evolve, and then it's like, okay, now you're back to, you know. But then, again, like I said, I wrote those songs. So mm-hmm. it's like, that's, they can't take that away from you as ah. an artist. Whatever. Was, like, was yeah. this contract like a label-type contract? Not necessarily. It was more of like a private, it was like publishing and management. So it wasn't a label, but you know, with contracts, it's like those things come in, you know, and partnerings and everything. Um, but yeah. So the only music that came out of that contract was all the SoundCloud stuff? Um, with that contract, I never released anything. Any music. Wow. It was all sketched stuff. So wow. like I said, the whole plan was a sketch. But it's crazy because when I think about it, and I think about the messages I would get from that time, these guys would always tell me, like, yo, don't, don't rush, you know? Like, enjoy the process. Like, this is you finding yourself. And I never understood it then. I was frustrated. I was like, yo, why is everybody dropping music? And I'm not. Everybody at home is dropping music. I'm not. I'm just on SoundCloud. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. But they're like, chill out. Just enjoy the process. So I trusted that process, you know? And now is when I'm really staring to, like, appreciate these music, do visuals, interviews you know mm. it's like I've be, it's like I'm, com- I'm out of a bubble bro you know mm. like a proper box and i feel like those things i think about today because if i hadn't gone through that i wouldn't understand the gravity of mm. what is creating what is storytelling what is being humble what is actually understanding that everything around what that makes this shit happen is important from the roadie to everything it's like yeah it's like once you're up there it's like fam it's like family it's like mm. it's like a team team or whatever you know it's like there's some things that come with it that you don't understand until you've gone through it i think you know um so it's, it's part of the growth so I, I i appreciate it but at the same time it's as draining as it was i do i'm grateful for, for those mm-hmm. moments yeah love that bro it's i'd like to <laughs> ask a bit about your like creative process yeah do you write the songs do you like freestyle them do you wait for an emotion to hit and then yeah. You write out of that, or is it something that you can just do, like yeah. second nature, like writing? You've done it for so long. No, it's um. crazy because um, when I create, it's usually the melodies. So I play the keys. Um, so I play the keys, and I come up with a melody, and then in the end, I just write whatever feels right, you know. But of late is when I really analyzed, and like I realized that even this Zuba EP that I did, it's like the people I meet, you know. It's it's like the experiences, man. Like at that time. I wrote Zuba, uh, Zuba is a song I wrote for my baby moms, you know, mm. and I, at that time I was like, you know, we were together at the time and everything, and I think about it now and I'm like, if I hadn't met her, I would not have written those songs, you know. True. Mm. Barely Mix comes from the fact that there was like three songs on the Barely Mix project that were, had been recorded like three years ago, sketched, so I'm like, this is gonna, I'm like, yo, why don't I just record these tracks, and then... I remember two days before we recorded it at the, s- at the spot, I wrote this song called I'll Be Your Light. I'm like, it was nine, tr- nine tracks. I'm like, fuck mm. it. We're going to make it ten. Mm. And I put it on. That's and the outro. Um, it's like, what, the second last track. Mm. And I remember when it was all finished, I played it for my dad. And he's like, bro, if you play, if you put this on the project, I don't know you. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> Do not fucking put this shit on the project. Because he heard it and it's pretty vulgar, right? Mm-hmm. But I put it down yeah, anyway. Like a cussing, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was cussing. It was pretty nasty. And 
I told him, oh, no, it's not on, and he found out about a month or two later. And he was like, but I think in general, it's just experiences, bro. It truly is, yeah. But don't be like, you cussed a lot or not. You just said, I'm a yeah, fucking big lighter. So yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, one <laughs> class, that's, that's enough. Really, yeah. You're doing too much. If you drop this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I said something like, I still fuck you like before and something ah, like that. And then he was like, ah, Mike, like my son. Like, oh, yeah, stop don't, this. Yeah, yeah, don't do this stuff. Don't do this. Yeah. Hey. But honestly, it's truly experience, man. Like the small things I experience, the people I meet, especially. I feel like the music I'm writing right now is also the, the new energy that I've encountered lately. The people that I'm working with. Yeah, it's feel, truly. It's truly feel, yeah. Truly feel. Bro, I'm, I'm so glad you brought the Zuba thing up. Yeah. Because that's, that's one of my questions, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you have so many songs right. named after women. That's crazy. Bro, this guy has like a ridiculous <laughs> number of songs named after that's women. Crazy. I won't and lie. That's like, yeah. that's like a thing I that R&B guys be doing. Yeah. yeah, he said it's after his baby moms. Yeah. 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 His baby that's moms. a name though, but... No, so, that's, that's a big name. Mm. So this is what I, this is what I want to do, right? Yeah. Um, okay, firstly, is that like a, like a tactic? I know you said that you write, yes. you write from like your experiences yeah, okay. and people that you meet. So I'm guessing it's not just like you're not just trying to like catch guys' attention by naming them after women. No, no, no. Okay. It's like so a lot of those songs that maybe have other. It's like a song. I have a song called Tina on my yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah, that's a friend of mine. It was my best friend in high school. Nice, nice. Uh, Sabrina is fictional. It's okay. Um, but based on someone like Zuba. Um, I wouldn't say, man. It's crazy. That's just something. Because when I wrote it, I had the melody again, and the first thing that came into my mind when I wrote it, it was very slow, bro. Very like, I was thinking of like R and B oohs and snaps, and mm, mm. it was a total different feel, man. And mm. I played it for the producer at the time, Danny Beats, and it's like, nah, let's just give it a feel. And I wasn't even planning on releasing it. Lockdown came through, and I was like, fuck, we're stuck. So what now? And then I released it, and, and Sabrina did a lot. No one moved. And then I checked the numbers. Yeah. And Kampala was Woo, popping. And I'm that like, one Yo. moved, bro. Sabrina. You know, and that's actually the song that also brought me to the locals at home much closer to them because they were like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And that song is what truly the people bumped it, man, at home. Okay. And it was, yeah. You mind if so I go through a few of the others? And you yeah, sure, tell sure, us? sure. <laughs> Linda, intro. Linda, oh, wow. Um, barely mixed. Was Linda so there? Linda is not necessarily, so that's another thing. I've, is it, that was a chorus I had in my mind. Once in a blue moon. So I've had that chorus in my mind for so many years. And it's just, it was just that thing of like, what am I going to do with this? So I wrote a verse and it, I couldn't write a second. I'm okay. like, fuck it, this is the intro. You know? Okay. And we recorded it and that was it. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. That's uh, it. Not in particular. Nina with a side eye. Nina with a side eye. That's my favorite Mike song, bro. Really? By far. That that's my so favorite crazy. Mike song, bro. I haven't played that in a while. Oh, man. Oh, listen to it. Um, definitely about an ex of mine that I had. Mad side eyes, you know. Mm. The side eye meant something, you know. Mm. Bombastic very toxic side as well. <laughs> mm. Very toxic relationship. Very. I think the most toxic thing I've ever experienced. Um, but yeah, that that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also have a Nina story, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You also have a Nina. <laughs> bro, I'm not gonna lie. Use that song, bro. I use that song <laughs> <laughs> to heal. <laughs> I use that song, bro. Nina did too. There was a girl. There you was call a girl. her like Nina. Okay. No, there was a girl. <laughs> I was a girl from uni, and it's so crazy. She's gonna be watching this, yeah. so I'm snitching on myself. <laughs> but <laughs> there was, I, I listened to that song. The first time I ever heard you was that song on SoundCloud, yeah, and uh, I was still in uni. Yeah. And at that time, there was a girl called Nina yeah. whose attention I was trying to get. Yeah, like yeah. I, had, I had met her, like she just wasn't feeling me like right, that, bro. Right. <laughs> But I know she was random, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh. so... Might be the uh, same As luck <laughs> would have it, bro. <laughs> Literally, as luck would have it, yeah. I'm just... You know how SoundCloud just plays random right, shit? Right, right. That song comes on, I'm like, yo, who's this? I see yeah, Mike Kaihura. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, bro, this guy is sick. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I'm like, yo, Nina, have you heard this song? <laughs> <laughs> have you heard this song, man? There's your name in it. <laughs> and, bro, it worked, man. That's mad. It worked. That's no joke, it worked. Mad. Yeah, so shout out to Nina. I know shout you're watching out to this. Nina. Yeah, you that's probably see her. You'll see her before yeah. you leave, I'm sure, man. That's crazy, because, like, that's the, I just, just remembering, that's the first song I ever, like, it was Fruit Loops, like this uh, recording uh, software. That was the first song I produced on my own. I didn't mix it or anything. Mm. I laid down whatever it is, you know, made sure I was recorded. I was just getting the ropes of like what is producing and you know, mm. 
That's one of the few. Uh, I mean, you were already writing so well, yeah, man. Yeah, I was already writing and playing so the keys. Was that yeah. in the middle of like the yeah like, deal? Yeah, like that was towards the end of that contract, mm. you know, because there was a proper year or two of no communication with these guys. Oof. You know, frustrated with everything, and then this whole relationship came in. Crazy time, actually. I'd say 2016, 17. Life changing moment, man. Yeah. So right. those were the moments where I was like, okay, what's happening now? You know. Mm. So that moment where I was writing that stuff and all of that, and then towards like 2019 or 19, where I released barely mixed. Mm. Yeah, th- interesting times, man. Okay, yeah. bro, don't sleep on SoundCloud, Mike. No, I SoundCloud, Mike man. was a dangerous yeah, man. <laughs> SoundCloud, <laughs> Mike, bro. That's okay, bad, yeah. uh, Maria. Maria Lele, it's crazy. Same shorty. But I was with her at the time. And bro, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it, huh? It's like when I revisit these songs, I realize exactly what I was writing about after it was all done. So I'm like, fuck, I'm actually writing about this shorty. I'm writing mm. about the fact that I'm not for you, but your homie might be for me. And I was still with her. It's almost like I was already feeling that the energy is wrong. But I'm going with the flow because I fuck with it. It's good. It's okay. like you know what I mean. Wait, like, did I, I that, that's a bad boy line. Did that get you? <laughs> so <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not for I you, but your homie might be for you. I just exactly. still with her when, when this dropped. Did that cause any? I was any, still with her, but I didn't tell issues? her. I didn't tell her about it. I was just like, oh, it's just a track that came to mind. Uh, but do you think she didn't know? I, I, I wouldn't be hearing that. Like, I don't know. It's crazy because like after it came out, and my boys are like, "What's this? It's really long." And the producer didn't understand what I was doing. I'm like, I need gunshots. I need sirens on it. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no. I want, you to, I want this to be like this. So when I finished it is when I, I understood it. It's like, I was basically saying, yo, yeah, this might not be the thing? right thing, but uh. your homie, because the homie was all right, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's weird, but I, I feel like that's it. That's the storytelling, the feel I was telling you. Yeah. This chick's name is Maria Nina. Uh, Nina Maria. That's the thing. Those are not even her names. Oh, okay. Their names. So it's just okay. like, you know, yeah. Maria is like, as I was writing, that's the first thing that came. That's I also, that's like name. around the time of Travis, Travis, Travis and Justin Bieber's song. Maria, I'm drunk. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. This is like 2015. Yeah, 2015 is when I dropped Maria in LA. Yeah. Okay. Nah, that's definitely older. Yeah, I think around that Travis time. Travis was listening to it. He's like, hmm. Hey, Maria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's okay. my guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Laura. Laura, that's that's actually a cover. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I never put it there because it's a cover. Gregory Porter. Mm. Hey Laura. So I covered it. It's like I just put okay. it on. Yeah, it's a cover. Okay. You already tell us about Tina. Tina is your I best did, friend. Yeah, it's yeah. a high school best friend. Mm. We really, we're not as close anymore, but we still communicate. But that was the homie in high school. She was uplift, you know. Like okay. those people would just pull up on you and they're like, "Yo, what's up?" Chin up, you know. Love that. Get your shit right. Let's go. You know? Love that. Shout out to yeah. shout out to Tina. Shout out to Tina. Yeah. Need more Tina. Everyone needs a Tina. More Tina. Chin up. Okay, nice. You already told us about Zuba and about Sabrina. Okay, nice. I needed to get that out of the way, bro. Because <laughs> <Hey, laughs> I've been needing to know what guys are trying to do out here, man. <laughs> bro, if I ever meet a Tina, ah, uh, well, hold on. She's <laughs> finished. <laughs> but like, well, there's a guy called Mike. You should listen to him, man. <laughs> now I need to now just start asking him. You are you Max? <laughs> oh, my best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let me ask you a question. Um, when you're talking about one of your songs, you talked about listening to your music. Do you do that? Like, do you, one night you're at home, yeah. and you're like, hey, let me first listen to, like, Sabrina. No, that's the thing. Like, before music is dropped, for me, at least, I listen to it to the max. It's like, so I listen to it. You're, you're yeah, tired. by the time it's <laughs> out, I'm just like, yeah, it's mm. out of the way, you know? And so listening to it again is usually maybe when I'm with the homies or it feels right, I can bump it. It always feels weird. Is it so weird? When you, you, you're you like yes. at a party, then some guys yeah, like, wait, yeah. I'm, 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 there's this song. Yeah, yeah there's this <laughs> track. Yeah, it's crazy. That is your music. Yeah, yeah. It definitely feels strange. But it's also fun, like, there's been moments where I'm in a room and people just play the track. They don't know it's my track. It happened in Nairobi as well when I was there a week ago or so. And they're like, oh, this is, this is, this is him. I'm, they're like, what? I bumped this shit. This shit is my playlist. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, that's dope. That's really dope. Because it's like, that's stuff I wrote in my room. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you fuck with that. That's dope, yeah. yeah that, but it does feel weird. It's like, ah. Yeah. That's fine. That's, yeah. that's fine. Do you ever, when you like listen to old music sometimes, a few times that you do, do you ever get like the sense like, oh, I could have changed something, I could have said this all the time? Yeah, definitely. 
that's the thing, like, but I'm walking away from that. You know that perfection thing? It's like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't, I was a bit, I could sound better here. Um, I, I met this art producer called Sean in Nairobi, Supersonic, and he's, he was like, the first take is always the best. Mm. First take is always, no matter what. And I think about it, I'm like, that shit might be right. Because it's like, that's the energy you had right then and then. That's so it's, it's like, fuck, I'm about to lay this down. And you lay it down. So the first take is, uh, so I try not to overthink, man, like, anymore. Like, of late, it's just, I don't know. I've been surrounded by artists, bro, musicians that, man, he's playing the drums and he's singing his heart out. And you're like, what's up? You know, like, he's put so much energy in perfecting the craft, but he's not happy. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know mm. if, you know, there's that running towards perfection too much. We forget that music is just a language. You can communicate in the simplest form of communication, and because it's, it's it's a sensitive field, I think you know, mm. the mental s state of an artist is not talked about enough because mm. there's trying to like keep up with what people are expecting from you. You trying to perfect what you did last time that they like. It's like I have to keep up with this, but there's also you trying to talk about what you feel, you know. So it fucks with the mind a bit, you know, and then deal with the fact that life is life. Artists are just generally sensitive, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know. I try not to overthink, man. I don't overthink anymore. It's like, if I feel it, I feel it. That's it. And then it goes. Whatever came, Whatever that's comes, what I'm going. Man, yeah. uh, bro, I think it's so mad that you say that, like, you had, like, a like a perfectionist thing before. Yeah. Because, like I said already, my favorite album from you is barely mixed. Yeah. Crazy. And it's yeah. barely mixed, bro. It's like barely <laughs> you just said that you you guys recorded it like yeah, live. It crazy, Everything yeah. was impromptu. So like there's laughing, yeah. like there's stopping, yeah, like there's you know. Yeah, and I thought that was so sick. And yeah, all my yeah. favorite stuff from you is that kind of stuff, right. like the rough stuff, right. the SoundCloud stuff. Right. So now I want to talk about Zuba. Yeah. Because <laughs> when Zuba came out, yeah. Like I, now me, I'm a fan of old Mike, right? Right. right. So Zuba was not the easiest listen for me right. at first. Yes. I was like, yo, why is Mike trying to make me dance? I want yeah. to cry, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just make me mean, sad. Yeah, yeah, Let's be you. mad at chicks. Yeah, That's what I, I wanted, you, right? Yeah. So Zuba wasn't the easiest, but yeah. I mean, like you said, it brings yeah. the bodies out. So eventually right. you have to adjust. Right. Yeah. You have to adjust your thoughts. Because <laughs> the bodies want to dance. Yeah. You dance. So how was, like, I guess, the, the making of Zuba? Because that's you know completely that. different. Oh, man, I don't know. It's in lockdown, bro. Mm. Like I said, I'd met this shorty, you know, baby moms. We're not together anymore, but we're cool. Mm. And it inspired that. But I remember chilling with Bien mm. in, in Nairobi when we were recording, and he's like, brah, I know you want to write this shit, but yo, you got to pay the bills. How are you going to pay the bills? How, 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 is the, how does an artist pay the bills if the, if the people aren't listening to that? You know what I mean? And he said it. I'm not trying to say that that's the context I was on, but it's more of like you want to keep that essence of being, are you being felt as an artist, you know? And then like, you stay in a bubble, but then what? You know? Music is too universal, man. Like for me, it's like I was trying something out, and the, the producer I was working with at the time pushed me to it. The manager I had at the time was like, "Yo, fuck it, let's go." So a track like Tuza is something that I didn't want to release, and they were like, "Nah, you have to put it mm. on the project." Mm. And that's the track. That that's how that goes. That's, that's, that, that's the track. That you know what I mean? It's crazy. So I'm like, "Fuck, all right, let's go, man." Let's, who did let's that cut? Uh, who did that cut thing? Like a guitar thing in the beginning? Oh, that's just it, a producer no, or an actual no, guitar? No, the producer. Because I finished the project. Um, I think Besties was the last track we finished. No, no. The intro. Um, uh, B's intro was the first track we finished, and then. He was like, yo, I've got some beats. Just listen to this. What do you think? And he played that. As soon as I heard that guitar, I like, was like, That was sick. And I wrote it right then and then. Less than an hour, I had the whole fucking track. I was like, this is fire. Mm -hmm. You know, we, had a, we were having a few drinks. Mm -hmm. And we, that's it. That was it, yeah. But then, after we did it, I was like, fuck. So now they want it on the album. Mm. But this is not really... It sounds mm. too wise. It's like, nah, just go. This is, you know? So it was the seventh or the eighth track on the thing, yeah. Okay. But yeah... It's interesting that you bring up, mm. like, an artist being heard. Yeah. Like you said, I think you put it like, will this pay their bills? Like, I don't want to write this. Yeah. So, I guess my question is, do you jump on trends? Do you just do what sounds good to you at the time? Yeah. Do you have, like, editors who listen to what you produce and tell you, okay, yeah. drop this, drop that? Yeah. Because your music doesn't, at least doesn't strike me as someone who's necessarily chasing trends. <laughs> yeah. yeah? 
He just or like sing he likes to uh, sing. Yeah, sing his heart. He just does what he wants. Yeah. Like, he just does, does what he wants. <laughs> no, it's crazy. You know, I feel like I've not. I feel like the music I want to give, I've not given yet. You know, it's like as I write my music, there's some music I write. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna release this. And I picture myself doing something totally different from this, from Zuba, from I love the keys. Yeah. I want to get on the keys. I want to be on the keys. I want to have the right people around me. I want to have the right sounds. I love to have an orchestra with me. You know what I mean? Mm. Violins. Those, and yeah, all of that shit, you know? But at the same time, it's like you've got to work with what you have because it's an unending fucking process of learning. You're learning every day. That comfort is what kills us, I think, as artists. Mm. You sit in a position you're like, yo, this is dope, and you chill with it. And the trends, you know, like, the numbers go up. It, it obviously, it's like, dope. That's like, yo, this some, the views are popping. It gets to you. It's like, yo, this is dope. Yeah. But you forget the route, man. Like, So for me, it's like, I don't know, man. I just go with what makes me happy. You know, because I feel like eventually, I will find myself in that position with, with the sounds I want to create. And uh, I'm collaborating as much as I can. Like, no limits. I feel like one way or another... If the visual is intact, if I keep visualizing it, I will find myself in that place where I'm like, this is me, you know, this is actually what I want, you know. But st- it, at the end of the day, I still feel like even if I get to that, I still want to, you know, it's like you're growing every day, you know. So no, like, if I come up here, no song dropping soon. Oh, I mean, if, if, if do a that's not? trendy. It is trendy, It's yeah. super trendy right now. But like, like I said, it's like, if it feels right, bro, mm. just do it, yeah. What would you say is like the popping music right now on the continent? Who would you say is the flag bearers right now? Right now? Yeah. Wow. That's a tough one. Because some people say it's Afrobeat, but some yeah, people say that it's actually I'm a piano. I saw that Rema is performing in India, bro. In He's India? India. India. You see that? He's That's touring sick. India. Rema is touring that is India. That's sick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't but know. But, but he, he, he manifested that one. No, but you How? see the thing. Like, he know, said it I in an interview. I've seen like, uh, an interview where he's talking about, like, yeah, people. This me. talk about how you mix the Arab sound with this. Yeah. If you think about mm-hmm. 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 and if you think of calm down, maybe you calm down. Calm oh, down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, I just shake like, your shoulders. <laughs> when I see, <laughs> see someone like Rema touring India, come on, that's insane. What can be better than Afrobeat right now? Like yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't know, man. You see Burno Boy performing at Coachella, you know, making 750 grand from a show, performing at Dreamville. Mm. You know? mm. like, so that. Come on. that's What's better than Afrobeat right now? And in the sense of fresh and the potential of like, this shit is not going to stop. Yeah. And mm. to be fair, Afro- yeah. Afrobeat is, yeah. I mean, Afrobeat is very, it, it yeah. evolves a lot. It really does. It, it really, every year there's a Yo. different style of yeah. the same thing whereas yeah, shaki. I'm a piano mm. well, that shaki, it's it's yeah. so it, it came out of nowhere it came out of no bro absolutely the sound came out of nowhere it came out of nowhere the and choirs everything yeah. like what? and he's and then yeah. you, the and videos then you check out his story he's done contemporary dancing mm. it's like he's you know what I mean this is like he was a dancer you know, he's one of those artists for me that has popped and I'm like that shit right there that's what we needed as African artists because mm. like he's the mix of like contemporary he's been in choir he's it's like f- his mu- African music like foundation is like to the core. Yeah. He, ha- he has the word it feels like being in a church, being a contemporary dancer and all of that. It's discipline too, you know? Mm. So yeah, man. Nah, shit. These videos are crazy. Yeah. Always videos mad. are crazy too. Nah, it's Afro like you said. I think Afro like beat. all artists have to, you have to like kind of first soak yeah, in yeah. it. Soak in the art yeah, for a yeah, while yeah, and then when you pop off, yeah, yeah. it makes sense, bro. 100%, man. You know? I feel you, yeah. Yeah. Therefore. Okay. So. Um... Bro, now that you mentioned, firstly, on a side note, you just said that India shit. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we reviewed an Indian movie. Like, when we're not doing the podcast, right. we also do right. like a reaction yeah. type thing. We reviewed an Indian movie called RRR. Have you seen Yo, it? Oh, crazy movie. You watched it? <laughs> <laughs> bro, we did RRR. <laughs> it's crazy. Listen, bro, oh, yeah, we did yeah, RRR based yeah. off his recommendation, yeah, right? Yeah. And it was just, for, it was funny. Oh, yeah. let's do like a quick, like, <laughs> Indian movie. Bro. The comments. That shit is crazy. First of all, that Ooh. shit popped off. Great. And the comments, because yeah. we, what we do is we review like the first 10 right. minutes of the yeah. movie. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the only scene that we saw was the one of like the little girl getting as if kidnapped yes, and her mom fighting. Yes, yeah. And all like, ah, bro, I'm not trying to see this yeah. shit. What? Yeah. Bro, the comments, <laughs> guys came for us. <laughs> only Indian guys, bro. <laughs> not even the guys who watch us. Just a bunch of Indian guys saying we know nothing. How dare you? 
<laughs> telling us, bro, watch the movie, <laughs> then react. And we watched that movie, oh, yo, bro. What a movie, man. That but movie I'm not even going to lie. Like, I didn't know what to expect. You know, uh, Netflix is chilling uh, yeah, at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. You go to drink. I was home alone, I remember, man. And I was like, let's just watch it. I think an hour in, I'm like, this is sick. This is great. Okay, should I go on? Or like... <laughs> and then there's this scene where the... The guy invades this party, man, with the truck and the tigers. And yeah. yeah. I'm like, ah, nah, this is crazy. <laughs> that was a sick Like, movie. Hollywood, it needs to step the fuck up. <laughs> that was a sick movie. And it had a bit yeah. of everything. A bit of everything. A bit of everything. Man, absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. Let's talk about good. Coachella real quick, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you see that Frank Ocean stuff from last weekend? I did. I saw some clips. Mm. People complaining about that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it was, it was at a listening party instead of a... Oh no, man! Is I it a performing? Because he was just chilling. Really. On s- is it s- the the second or the first weekend? He didn't do the second. He weekend. didn't do the second. Yeah, yeah, he actually didn't come for the other. One. Yeah. He did the first week. He said he hurt his knee or something. He said he broke his ankle. Oh. Broke his ankle. Yo, Frank. Yo, Frank. I feel like yo. Me. I feel like yeah. That's next level. I don't know. Frank is. I don't know how to. Ex- how do you explain that? It's, it's trippy because like he hasn't dropped music in a while as well mm. he hasn't performed in a while performed in as well and i mean it's not that he has any contractual issues he sorted those out mm-hmm. so yeah it's tricky for him to come through and like just chill listen to his own music playing <laughs> you know what's so interesting <laughs> yeah like a lot of the hype around frank is guys say oh he's a genius because yes. of like a stuff he did yeah. with apple and his yeah, label yeah. and how he played them da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now after his coachella stuff yeah yeah Guys are now shifting the narrative. They're like, what's going From on? From he's a genius to he's just now this he's a scammer. Bro. He's just a scammer. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gets the back <laughs> and just does what he wants that's after that. Because yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Like, this guy has a history now of like playing these big organizations that organize yeah. this music industry. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, the guard, the, the old bag. Guy. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> I guess it's just him continuing that. But yeah. at the same time, did you hear like the backstory? Mm-hmm. So, for example, they had like this whole. Setup that they had planned, ice skaters were supposed to ice skate yeah. around him. In fact, in the video, the people who were walking around him were actually ice skaters. But yeah. in the and like in the eleventh hour, he said, "No, I don't want this anymore." He was done with the idea. No he thought he could do better, so everything was scrapped literally just before the show. Yeah. So that's how it ended up looking so oh, like thrown man. together like that. And he also cancelled the YouTube stream. Mm, he so the live stream. Live, he said, "Oh, no man. thanks." Okay. Yeah, but at least give the people a show. Right? And the people have like been waiting for some yeah, time. You know? yeah. And people have been waiting for you for a minute. For years. A lot of people probably, you know, paid loads of money to be there for that moment. Mm-hmm. And then you missed the second one you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Nah, but the good thing, you know, Banner Boy was there to hold right, it down. Right. He killed his performance. Man. Did you see did you see the Banner Boy performance? Nah. So nah. I saw some clips as well. As, okay, I feel like Banner Boy now at this point has a routine that he does at every show. Yeah, I mean, no, that's the thing. He's got the band and... He's got the band and he has, yeah. I guess, like a show every other week, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So you can't be yeah. unique every time. Yeah, fine. But I think I've seen that guy's whole routine now from these clips. 100%, bro. From these clips. Oh, Banner Boy did an Indian song as well. Oh, Mirana. Yes, yeah. with the guy that passed, right? Sidhu Musawala, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. R.I.P. Yeah. So you might be next, bro. You might be. Might see you on like an Indian thing, bro. <laughs> it might work. Yeah, but oh, it's actually, I think this Kiddy remix, pass, pass, pass. My Mary Jane, oh. the remix is with an Indian lady. No I'm telling you, that's, that's like it. hundreds of millions of views. <laughs> Did a rem- that 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 remix, by the way? Yeah. It's like no one here knows about that remix. It's only popped in that? India. Yo, but Kiddy. I've also not heard about it. Before. What's that Kiddy song? You know, pop, pop, pass, my, my Mary Jane. Jane. Really? Yeah, I'm my own life. I really want to know what the Indian dude did on that song. Bro. Let me see. Indian girl? Ben Indian girl. Over. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, play that. Let's hear that, bro. Let me see. Yeah. Kiddy. 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 Yeah. I don't know. It's like called Shut Up. The fusion of like Afro yeah. and Indian. Tulsi Kumar. Madness. I don't know. In terms of like long term, yeah. fusion wise, it would be crazy. Because you think of the sitar, like the. Mm. Yeah. But that's the shut up and bend over. That oh. song. Mm. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know if you can play. I don't know if it's if it's because our cultures are like very. I don't know if the India were there any Indians in Rwanda like pre-colonial oh, times or post-colonial no, times. Sorry. In a lot of other parts in Africa. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. in East Africa yeah. as well. Like a lot of Indians. They're brought by the British. I don't British. know if that's why. Like. Yo, but you know, yeah. sound sound the cultures move, man. Sound, sound moves, like, bro. As much as the cultures didn't really. The similarity, but sound always like entertainment was like you know, because I'd, I'd imagine the leaders would go visit and they'd be like, I like this. And a fire. <laughs> you bring yeah. it back home, yeah. like yeah. you it's know what I mean. Like, like those, li- they don't talk about those things, you know. But I'm sure they happened, you know, like how kings would go visit the others and 
and, yeah. and Indian music is a bit similar to African music. There's a lot yeah. of percussions. There's a lot yeah. of yeah. Um, intricate yeah. drum yeah. patterns. And it's all, it, a lot of it is for dancing. Bro. A lot of it is yeah. for dancing. You have to make sure guys can yeah. dance to it. And it's like happy music is for yeah. jamming and having a good time, yeah. which is like Afrobeat. Yeah. There's not a lot of sad Afrobeat mm. where you, you know, get in your feels. Yeah. I can't it's very little. Really sad for beach right now. It's there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Boy alone. Like it's not <laughs> coming. Okay, no, first chill that boy alone. <laughs> boy alone. <laughs> that entire album bro. was okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you can still vibe to it. True. True. In a sad way. He he ha- he he covers his pain with all the champagne, you know. Yeah, 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 um, champagne. Doesn't pay <laughs> so it's like, hey, party time, party time. But if you listen to the lyrics, Yo, it's actually very sad. Like like um, I I lived in Ethiopia for a year. I I did music school there. Yeah. I was twenty till I was twenty one, and the patterns that they have with the Indians are so similar, man. Mm. Like the voices, like the, 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 the ah, what's that? What's yeah. that called? That like that last way, like kind of yeah, like, yeah. make your voice shake like yeah, that. Yeah, the shaky thing, and it's like so similar. Yeah, 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 like that. <laughs> it really goes, you know. <laughs> so like that, and then the talking drum from West Africa, and yeah. they really are about the percussion. So it's very similar, man. Can you do the Ethiopian dance? Nah. You see the man. The shoulders, man. The shoulders have to like move. You know, at some point you see the eyes pop out because they're, they're trying to stay focused, right? <laughs> some point <laughs> the eyes are out and like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Yeah. Uh, have you seen the video that's been going viral of that of the guy who is kind of squatting and is like moving like this? On that's the floor, fire. back and forth, that's and like his boys come in. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Oh, like that's cancer type thing. That thing look Crazy. way too late, bro. I, I can't even. Can, I can't like. I can't it's like. actually fire. It was so far. Uh, nah, shout out to the Europeans. But let's talk about the the last Mike Kaihura concert briefly. Yeah. Um, I know you said it was like nerve wracking, but yeah. how was it like after the concert? What did you get into? Like, what was the energy? Oh man, I remember going up and I'm like, yo, shit. Like so, I'm like, yo. So you guys really came through to actually watch me play, you know? Um, I think for me the first thing is just the fact that the first time coming back ever since I left was that, you know. I hadn't wow. been back, bro, for a minute. Wow. Like even just visiting and stuff, you know. And I had a little brother as well that passed over here before we left. Oh, so, damn, RIP. so that for me was like, it's a Emotional. bunch of things, you know. So, yeah, it's like storytelling, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the overwhelmingness that I felt. It's like, okay, a mix of all of that. Mm-hmm. So, but after that, it was like, okay, good energy. You know? okay. So, like, I mean, I'm a small circle person, man. I don't, I don't club like that. Mm-hmm. It's like more, it's like, I keep it, you know, if I'm around the right people, I'm good. So, the energy was right, man. Sat down, talked about music. Um, I remember, I think I chilled with uh, DJ Tennis as well after mm-hmm. that. I just, I don't know, just talking music, fusion, like, yo, we need to do something about why are Rwandan and Ugandan and Kenyan artists not linking up enough? Like, what's stopping us from actually being together, like working together? It's like, we, the goal is, is one, it's to be the best that we can yeah. be. Mm. But how are we going to do that without fusion? And I remember talking to them about Joshua Baraka, and I'm like, bruh. This guy is playing his own shit, yeah, and nice. he's producing his shit. You only need to, you guys need to fucking watch this guy. He's coming through, and I remember telling this to Tennis and a few other people. Those are the kind of things that we need to look at and really give a lot of respect and like, because it's not easy getting to that. That's storytelling. That's emotion. So when I look at him, I'm like, he has something to say. He's a story to tell, you know. And when I heard Nana, I was like, ah. It has happened. Yeah. It has yeah. happened. It's that fusion. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like. It's that it. I feel like, yeah, just let the guy be and just see. You know, I feel like he has a lot to give. You know? And Josh, Josh came to Rwanda, but he didn't perform. Eh? Came through. We were supposed to link as well. Mm-hmm. For I remember for a session. We never got to because <clears throat> there's a lot going on at the time, mm-hmm. personally as well. Um, but he didn't perform. He came by. Mm. But that's the thing. He just came and said, look. He is supposed to perform. I remember he had a show to do, but it didn't come through. But the fact that he was there, it's like, that's the fusion. It's like, you know, it's like, look, I'm not only here to jam or work, but I'm here to, what's up, let's record, you know? So that kind of thing is needed more. Where we just show up and just like, yo, that's something I'm learning a lot more. Even when I went to Nairobi, I went to Nairobi like two weeks ago, 
And obviously to work with, I wanted to work with Bian and a few other artists. But I was like, nah, I'm going to work with everything I can. It's like, that's what it is. And then, so as soon as I came to, we walked to the Zawi yesterday. I'm like, yo, this is, this is dope. This is what it is. This is what it should be. It should be fusing. We should be having projects where all of us are like, mm. I don't know. It just opens the windows differently, I think, if we're together, you know? I feel like that's what West Africa is above us. What do you think causes that lack of collaboration, especially in the music industry? Would you say it's because the music that we listen to in the different countries varies so much? Because I know like Kenya has Nairobi as their Genge tone. Yeah. yeah, we have a thing at Chidula. Yeah. We have Random. I'm sure they have their thing as well. I mean, I feel like now, uh, the reason I'm saying that right now is that we're all going through a reshuffle, man. Like, if you go, I've been to Nairobi. The Genge tone is not popping like that anymore. The matter like, too. You know what I mean? It's like they're listening to Salty Soul, bro. Like, because th- that's what, that's what, I'm sure that's what you guys are listening to on the waves regularly. Tell me another artist, maybe Angie, Angie, Bad, because it's there now. Mm. But there's so much happening down the alternative sound. Mm. Yeah. So here as well, it's like. Chris Kagan. You know what I mean? Sounds by Maui. Like, I don't know. There's different feels that are there that should be like connecting with stuff that we have at home. Just the alternative feel. I look at artists like Amare from what Ghana, mm-hmm. Santini, uh, Crow Santino. Mm-hmm. That was not his name before, I think. Santi, Santi, yeah. Santi, yeah. Santi, Santi, right? Santi. Bro, this guy when he came through, crazy project. But I, I, I see what, what he's doing now. He's been given the freedom to do that, but he's still, you know. I don't know if it makes sense. The fusion is needed right now, I feel, you know, for us to at least find our sound. Because our sound is there. We have our sound as East African, bro. Like, we have, an, we have a sound, but it's not being used, I think, to the core, you know? Mm. I think what it is is just doing it, just getting up and being like, what's up? Let's actually work, you know? And it starts slowly but surely, like, you know, eventually you, a few people lead to a group, bigger group of people working together, and yeah, man. Because there used to be something like that. Do you remember East African Reggae Bashment yeah. Group? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And those jobs I feel like were there fire, was definitely bro. a time oh, where... I guess yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. This was, sounds very familiar. It was a time for yeah. sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. We used to do it. We were creating this track. <laughs> and Keith, my oh boy, Keith, my cousin actually, he was, a, he was like, oh, nice. So you guys are doing East African... But I'm like, what do you mean, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> East African Bashment Group. East African Bashment Group. Bashman Bashman <laughs> <laughs> but you know, actually, now that I think about it, at that time... A lot of East Africans were doing music together, but yeah. I think that everyone was just kind of doing like East African like reggae music. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone was doing that thing together. Exactly. And if like yeah. if they linked up, they were all doing like a particular style. Like yeah. say when the Navi you guys would do like with a kleptomaniac, some guys would be rapping. And that right you know? there, yeah, that there was literally UG Kenya TZ. Ronda wasn't there because Ronda mm. is Ronda is just going into. We have a very French background. So R and B is like, you know, the lovey dovey thing mm. is just, phew, you know, that's what's gonna go any day. Mm. Um, not that we didn't listen to that. I'm just saying in terms of that happening, that East African, because there's Ugandan and Kenyan artists mostly, you know, Bebe Cool would be a part of those things, you know, T Z would come through. So I feel like there's a lot more now. You know, the R and B scene here is crazy. For sure. Man. Um, in Nai is mad, so that fusion is needed, man. Like you know. Um. I don't know. I feel like we complicate it too much sometimes as a whole. It's just music, I think. Um, the easier we take it, you know. And also money, you know. You can't do these things without the money. Because like at the end of the day, you need money to do these things. You yeah, need support. Sure. You need the push. Yeah, it's, there's nothing like being an artist and being broke at the same time. Bro. You yeah, know what I mean? Honestly struggle, speaking, bro. that shit is struggle. like... Struggle. <laughs> bruh. It's like... It eats you for real. It eats you up. And I'm the when I say being an artist, I mean if you don't balance that understanding of like, yo, I need to know have the right people around me. To know when to like pull the plug out and be like, Okay, I'm out of the artist section of things. You can't move with it. I feel like it fucks with you, man, because like you're constantly trying to keep up with something that you think is is what's right, but in the end, it's not, you know? You realize, oh, I just need to be in my own self. And but anyways, yeah, that's it, you know? Now you're spitting, bro. Um, how do you feel about, like, all this AI technology, especially infiltrating the music? It's is dope. this something that excites you? I think it's dope, man. Yeah. I feel like people keep saying, like, that shit is fire, man. Like, I'm thinking of it as an artist who can play. Imagine the 
depths you can dive into. I'm like a pianist or guitarist. There's no limits now. It's so like you can create. It's, it, all I'm thinking is like you can go deeper into that that mind that you see. You teach your mind as an artist. You can go as deep as you want now. Like you can really dive and swim into that. You know what I mean? Because like we're not even using in our entire brain, right? Mm. Using half of it. So, so yeah. So if like I dropped AI. Mike Kagura right. featuring yeah. Joshua Baraka tomorrow. Yeah. Call it like, Kampala, <laughs> call Kampala. Call it like Susie yeah. or something. Yeah. Kampala like rules. Yeah. Yeah. And you spent 9.99. Call it Jessica. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, call it like Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you, are you yeah. suing me or not? Huh? <laughs> are you suing me or not? I see what you mean. But, yeah. I mean, look, I, it's AI. It's AI. It's going to be done. But we, we mean sitting down with him and doing something. You're going to know it's us doing it. Yeah, one way or another, man. Did you, you know, did you hear the weekend and Drake song from last I week. I heard it, bro. Bro, crazy. Did it? Okay, did it? Drake song was bro. Yeah. That song was so scary because, really like, crazy. I remember the early yeah, AI yeah, shit yeah, from like yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah, bro, like the strides they've yeah, taken. That yeah. song was mm. undoundedly fire, bro. That song was fire. That shit sounded better than the shit Drake dropped like <laughs> a week before that. <laughs> oh, that's that's like, true, actually the search and rescue, I think. Yeah, and but then I heard. I also heard this. It's crazy. Calligraph posted this video <laughs> of, uh, I don't know what the name was, and it's Kanye West going bar by bar. Was it him? Was it like Calligraph? It was, it was, it was Calligraph's track, but okay. Kanye was, yeah. with Kanye's voice, I'm like, yo, that's actually, yeah. It's, it's frightening, but I feel like, yo, it's, there's no limits, man, you know? That's the thing. That's the, that's that mind, that, the artistic thing I was saying, like, the more we get out of that, understand that. The more we understand how sensitive it is to be an artist, the more we'll understand that there's no limits. You know, yeah. we block our own blessings as artists because we overthink shit. You know, we, we, we're feeling like, oh, this is not popping, and it's like, you know, the floor should be the floor. It's art, man. Like, what's there today wasn't there. I'm sure, when Auto Tune came out, motherfuckers were going crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. T sure. Pain's doing Auto Tune, like what? And now everybody's using Auto Tune, bro. You walk into a studio with an artist, they're like, ah, ah, just, can you please put more autotune? Do, yeah. do you use autotune? I do, a bit now. Yeah, you get a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that sprinkle of autotune. A little bit, you know what I mean? No, like a, little, a little drop, man. Yeah. I think <laughs> honestly, because that's what I was talking to you about. Uh. That perfection, you know, uh. that we run towards, bro. I feel like it blocks us. You know what I mean? It blocks yeah. us in so many ways. I'm not saying it's not important to understand that we have to be clean with what we're doing. We have to be sober while we work. We have to, like, you know, be sober on stage and all that stuff and make sure we're hydrated. It's important to do that. But music is a language, I think. And I'm saying this because I come from that f- bubble, man, of, like, we're not going to drop this because it's not ready. What do you mean it's not ready? Mm. I wrote it. I finished writing it. I feel it's ready. We've done more than five sessions on this. Why don't we just release it? Mm. It fucks with us in the mind, you know? I'm just speaking based on the mental stability of an artist. We don't talk about that shit enough. Mm. I see so many artists drown, not because they're uh, indulging or anything, but it's like they're overthinking life. It's like the trends are making people feel like, oh, this is what's popping, you know? Mm. I'm not going to say I'm not a victim of that. I'm just saying like, if I don't talk about it, I'm not going to remind myself about these things. I'm not, you know, it's like it's a mess. It's storytelling as well. It's part of all of that shit. Sometimes you need to just pull back a bit and understand that it's... It's the love for it. It's you love it, you do it. Do it with love, you know? Like, know where you fit in. Yeah. This is me. This is what I do. Just enjoy it, you know? Was, with, like, the auto-tune thing, I'll say there's definitely a certain way in which the market and the consumers have adjusted to auto-tune, especially when it comes to, like, pop music. Yeah. Like, if it's a pop song and you're a really good singer, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But you don't have that kind of auto-tune like a sound. There's a way yeah. it sounds a bit too raw. Yeah. To be like a pop song. Unless you're like going for Adele. But I think even Adele uses a bit of auto-tune it as does. well. I'm sure yeah. she does. To bro. make it perfect. Yeah, so sure she does. Yeah. I, I can definitely say, because I know like a bunch of some yeah. artists who yeah. feel like they're purists yeah. and they do not want to touch the auto-tune at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, just something to consider. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like... Stitch and box yourself. <laughs> as an artist. Yeah. As an artist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but look, bro. I think with that yeah. AI, with yeah. the AI thing, yeah. um, just like with every other innovation, bro. Yeah. Yes, there's the guys who are afraid that it's going to like just increase with a course, with a competition. I'm sure AI guys are think are thinking, bro. Yeah, of course. There's, in, there's already enough artists. Yeah. I saw a stat the other week saying there's like 
25 million songs on, on Spotify that have right. never been listened to imagine. at all. I don't have a single listen. Can you imagine, man? That's actually so crazy. Wow. I'm crazy. sure some guys are thinking, bro, we've been struggling enough yeah. to like get recognized. So now yeah. you're bringing the AI thing to also add to a competition. Yeah. But bro, with every innovation, you know, the auto-tune thing, yeah. the most talented guys, like the most creative artists, eh, always figure out a way to make Find it work way. for them, bro. 100%, yeah. Like no one could have ever yes. foreseen T-Pain, bro. Absolutely. And sort of that a guy can't sing, but like what he did with that yeah, thing, 100%. it's different. You can't hate. Yeah. Even Jay Z, yeah. Jay Z hated. Death of auto tune. He hated on it, but he didn't whole, kill like, it, bro. There's a Netflix talk, right? Yes. About pop, yes, yes, yes. And yes, T Pain yes. story is there. Yeah. yeah. And they're talking about that. And it's, yo, it's crazy because he talks about how he went into depression. Yeah. Right? He talks Not about how it fucked with him. Mm-hmm. He's like, and you know what I mean? It's like. For someone like T-Pain to come through, I mean, yeah, he had this alcohol thing going on. Mm. But for him to come out and eventually talk about that, it just shows you, man, like, yeah, there's some small, small things that happen and you're like, yeah, this, you need to pull back a bit and understand that this is, it's the process, it's the growth of things. Yeah. What this is going to lead to is great, I think, you know. Yeah. With the air thing in particular, I think what's going to happen is they're going to regulate it, yeah. at least on these streaming platforms, number one. Then I think these... What do they call them? Like these music labels yeah. are going to use that technology to like develop songs right now. I think yeah. AI will be a great tool for ghostwriting. Absolutely. Like you can literally yeah. hear how the <laughs> song will sound yeah. in your voice Absolutely. before you put it out and send it out before you even record a single vocal. Yeah. So that, that's the kind of innovation that I see that this AI think is going to bring on, because I do agree on like slowing it down a bit. It's yeah. going too quick. It's going too fast. Huh? Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like we need it, man. We need it. We need we need things to be simpler. Why not? You mm-hmm. know, pull up on stage and you have an entire orchestra with you, but you can't see mm. those motherfuckers. <laughs> only AI. No, and it's just you know, I don't know. It's it's the way it is, though. I mean, my only issue with the AI thing is, I know the scammers are, are watching. Oh, man, Aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know they're watching. I know they, they can't ready. wait. Yeah, some, hey, some hey, you, around the election time, you're going to a lot of voice notes. Yeah, going around. <laughs> <laughs> Who said bro, what? <laughs> get a voice note from your mom, and she's yeah. like, "Bro, I need like I need <laughs> this much <laughs> money now." Because, <laughs> bro, I remember like early on in the that email scams, crazy. it was like that you'd see like an email from your teacher, and she's like, I've, "I was in this country." I've been abandoned. I need this much money. Please send it. And guys were sending that money. Oh, that's crazy. So now just wait. That's when your teacher crazy. calls you and she's like, Melvin, where are you? I'm abandoned. Yeah, please send me this much money. <laughs> that's and actually crazy. Because you, 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 hey, 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 you can hear her voice. You can hear her voice. What subject did you teach me? Just answer me one thing. I'm coming, but but just answer me one thing. I feel like by the time they've got the voice, they know the teach the subject, right? They know the subject. No subject. They know the. Or like maybe you saved that. Just ask them if it's English teacher. Like, where is my birth certificate? Where do you keep it? What is your maiden name? Yeah. But that's crazy, man. Like I I never thought of it like that. That shit is crazy. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like the pressure at that moment. It's like, yo, I need to send my mom this. My no, mom, man, she's actually in, Shh, in trouble. Gone, yeah. And you're asking her what's your favorite color. Bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Really? <laughs> That's yeah, why the scammer yeah. has to now improvise there. It's like, yo, are you serious? What up? I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you catch him. As my son, how can you ask me such questions right now? <laughs> eh? <Bro>. Sawa? <laughs> no. Did you guys hear of... Ed Sheeran being sued by Marvin Gaye, by the way. By who? No. Marvin Gaye's estate. Why? Marvin Gaye's estate sues everyone, bro. <laughs> bro they sue <laughs> everyone, bro. But why did they sue him? Um, apparently, they are arguing that thinking, uh, thinking out loud. Yeah. The, is that the song? Thinking by Ed Sheeran. Loud, Sounds yeah. very similar to Marvin's G- Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. I can hear it, but I can hear it as well. But you see, I feel like the problem with that is still. Oh, yeah. It has like a similar, like, Mm, I guess, like a progression. It's it's, it's somehow. Yeah. It's always. Now, we have a lawyer. Legally, what do they consider in such cases? The biggest issue is that that's America. That's the thing. The law is kind of stretched in America, Mm. bro. And intellectual property law there is super developed, bro. Because you can just imagine. Right. They have cases going way back, like, yeah, yeah. bro. Like here in Africa, it's very easy for us to just think independence, sixties. Yeah. Those guys have cases, intellectual property cases from like the forties, thirties, twenties. Their case law is wild. So it's bro. super. 
crazy. There's always something to refer to, yeah. right? Small and these Marvin Gaye guys, those guys, yeah, those guys are good. <laughs> 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 those guys are good, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Most people actually <laughs> just settle because it's not the first time. Yeah, but yeah. they sued everyone. Yeah. Yeah, but the they progression they is actually they the same. Robin Tick, right? Yeah, Bloodline. Yeah, Bloodline. Yeah. 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 And that was the biggest song in the world, bro. And Yo. they wait. No, 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 that's the other thing about yeah, them. They yeah. wait and until they wait. some shittings yeah, involved. I didn't see the similarity with that one. They wait for the numbers. Yeah. Robin Tick, Bloodlines. I don't know what song they played and it was... Bloodline? Bloodlines. 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 Bloodline. Pharrell and T.I. Uh, uh, Robin Fick. Yeah. 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 What, song, uh, what Marvin Gaye song were they saying? They bro, man, you can't do. It was Marvin Gaye though, yeah? It was. It was. Yeah, it's, always yeah. A, it's always in the state suing, bro. But um, no, no. but that's well because I can actually hear the similarity now. Yeah, 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 yeah. but <laughs> I don't know. I don't, like, you can't just own... I have an issue with guys suing for stuff like that. Like, as an artist, how can you own... A progression, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like you can own you certain mean. things. Yeah, you can own idea. the lyrics. You can yeah. own, but you can't own the way a the song. progression. Because yeah. like yeah. all that stuff really can. just comes from like. Yeah. Church. And to be fair, like most of the music people are making nowadays is sampled. It's so it's imagine it's someone yeah. goes on samples of Marvin Gaye song. Yeah, then you like, have to ah, pay. Yeah, it's all been done before. <laughs> you have to pay. That's how PDD ended up paying Sting. I think five thousand dollars a day. He's still paying yeah. to this day. Yeah, he's still paying. That song, every step I take, every move I make. For yeah. the track, yeah. 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 So that, that, that when I found that, I was like, "Damn, yeah. these That's guys actually take this." Because that means in Marvin Gaye's estate, if you use like F E G C. Yeah, yeah. like uh, that's our song. That's our <laughs> song. And I know Marvin yeah. Gaye was, uh, I, and I think his birthday was like a week ago. Me you know, so happy birthday, yeah, Marvin yeah, Gaye. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like today. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. Yeah. 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 You were saying like was, was happy birthday already, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You want to Kushla? Hey, Kushla. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, he's in tune with the culture. He's in tune with the culture. Listen, bro. I feel like the Marvin Gaye. I feel like the Marvin Gaye state, bro. I know he was a brilliant artist, but like the way his estate moves, maybe we slept on like how much of an innovator this guy was. Because, bro, no one sues as much as that guy sues. And yeah. people don't look at him the way they look at like Michael Jackson and like a few of his other guys. But oh. bro, no one sues more than that, that estate, oh, yeah. and no one wins like them, bro. They really do. So maybe he invented like a lot of shit, bro. I mean, yo, he's been I think Motown. He plays such a big role, songwriting and so on. Yeah, this guy was like proper. This guy was, like, was, was all, all rounded. Yeah. How was he able to own so much of the of his shit, bro? Because guys from that yeah. era never owned that's shit. True, that's does he like own I it? Is yeah. his family yeah. still the, 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 the it's estate? It's always a Marvin Gaye estate. Yeah. That's who it. Mm. I don't know. I mean, here's an interesting story as well. I watched mm. this documentary of his mm. about how, like, he would always fall and, like, somehow somebody would pick him up. And, you know, mm. there's a time where he completely went MIA off the grid. And some rich Belgian guy found him in, in London in a bar, in a corner somewhere, high as fuck. He was on drugs. And he's like, What are you doing here, bruv? Like, you're not dropping no more music. What's going on? Took him with him to Belgium for three months, cleaned him up, and he came back and dropped sexual healing. Mm. Wow. And it's like, fuck, that's crazy, you know? So I feel like it's just like... I got some healing, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's, that's the best thing, he Actually, dropped sexual healing, Belgian crazy man. project, yeah. won some awards, and then went back. You know what mm. I mean? So I feel like there were always moments where he was picked up, you know, by the right people. I think it's just blessings as well, you know? Deep. But his content is timeless, bro. It's like, so it's only right that it's handled with, you know? Do you think they, they suit like Big Sean or for Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay? They're like, that's our name. Nah, they must have paid for that record, bro. Yeah. They must have, they must have <laughs> paid Why are you saying one, his name bro. in a song? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just saying that guy's name, they must have paid for that. <laughs> that was the Wooders <laughs> today, man. Because <Right? laughs> there you're earning off, I guess, like his likeness in right? some way. I don't know. <laughs> his <laughs> likeness. That's a dangerous one. Oh, Marvin Gaye, yeah, it is. That's a dangerous one. Okay, um, what does you guys want to talk about, man? I was about to mention Kush. Yeah, I have questions. Let's get to that, bro. <laughs> For a brief moment. But let me ask you a question. Yo. We can't deny. Yo. Yeah? You have body pool, bro. Mm? Yeah, like yeah. a body pool is crazy. Body yeah. pool? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are bodies, bro. The, ah, Mike, hey. and Mike and the bodies. Yeah. That's Mike what I mean. What I think is also Mike and the bodies. <laughs> eh. And That's we know they're going to be bodies. At blankets. At blankets. So let me ask yeah. you as you as Mike. Yeah. Do you ever use that to your advantage? Like you're like I'm in another country? Yo. Hey. Yeah. I see what you mean. Mm. I'm fuel based. I'm energy based, you know? Mm. I don't for me it's like 
if we click, we click. You know what I mean? So I'll walk into a space and we it's a vibe, man. You know. Cool. So it's chica. I don't. Like, I'm yeah. a fan. I'm a fan. Eh? Yeah, but if the vibes are right, I mean, you you know what I mean. Yeah. You feel energy from the get go. Like you cannot deny energy. It's like if it clicks, it clicks. You and know. Do they ever ask you to like sing in the club? In the club, like something it's like that. Has ever never asked you like something like, like that? Couple okay, drinks like. in, I might just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna just pull up some. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple drinks in, I'm like, let's go. Let's yeah. see. You know, let's let's do it. Yeah. That's a really but good. That's a really good answer, bro. I, yeah. I don't know, man. So it depends on how I feel. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'm a feeling it's guy. A yeah. this, guy, this guy is keeping it on brand, bro. Yeah. So like, my guy, that guy feels, bro. The yeah. feeling guy. Yeah, but it's yeah. energy, man. Yeah. And we'll see at Kush Lounge. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. What's the? I haven't been to Kigali in a, yeah. in a while now. Yeah. So what's the nightlife in Kigali? It's definitely like growing right now. Mm-hmm. Definitely growing. Um, well, we're 29 years old. Mm. And that's young, bro. Yeah, that's right. Young. That's and young. I feel like we at home we we don't talk about it enough. So obviously, we visit the countries and we're always like, why are we not? You know. But I feel like now is now things are easing out. Now we're understanding that yeah, reconciliation and all of that's happening, and you know. But we need to remind ourselves that we're 29 years old and there's so much still to do. You know, we're keeping up with people like up with this we came up in nairobi how are we going to keep up with that if we're not in line with understanding what the goal is you know it's very easy to lose track so a lot of the things like nightlife i still have a long way to go but it's gotten better bro it's gotten so much better the more people come from here dj is what you know the fusion you know there's a lot of djs that come to spice it up you know the, the live music scene has been changed by a lot of burundian ugandan uh instrumentalists that come through kenyan so yeah, no, I think it's it's improving. Yeah. It's funny when I went to Ken, uh, now to Rwanda. This was I think two years back. That was not my experience at all. Like, really? I found the night like lit. Me too, bro. I had a I had a two years ago, like, back to back nights. Two years ago. Two years ago. We had just got a lockdown. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, everyone no. was this hyped. Was, this was like, before. Actually, yo, this was just yeah. the year before lockdown. Sorry, oh, 2019. 19. 19. Okay. 19. Okay. No, but oh, me, I went yeah. to Rwanda in like my maybe my S. It is, it is dope. It is. You that was a few, a few years, years ago, bro. That's a few years, years ago. Bro, I had yeah. a blast. It's good. O- also, because, like, Brandon women yeah. are, like, <laughs> Ugandan men's type. <laughs> yes. So, bro, it's very, like, yeah. off-putting yeah. is in the word. Like, yeah. it's ve- it shakes you right. to, like, go to a place right. and, like... Everyone. Everyone's your type, bro. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. You're like, bro, what the hell is going on? Yo, going, you man? can imagine what we, how we the propaganda. Feel. It's like we have gone to a point where just like, ah, just look at your boys. Like maybe we should just leave, bro. But bro, that's the other thing. All <laughs> the guys crazy. that I, w- I was with, right. they weren't feeling the girls at all, man. Right now, it's they knew them. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like yeah, on a yeah, deeper yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's wild. Spiritual level. That's me. That's me. Not Maria, bro. That's me. Not Maria. <laughs> Be careful with that, man. I feel like if you Big got a actually, bus yeah. of 30 guys from Kampala ah. and took the... Ah. Yeah, the These guys <laughs> might not even do anything. They'll just be seated looking just like, huh? Okay, Everywhere? Insane, if, yo, it's crazy. No, but, yo, Kigali, that's one thing I do believe we're blessed with. The beautiful women, man. Mm. It's really a, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, shout out to you. Anyway, we shall, we, we'll find them. I we'll find them. Yeah, I, I, I went for... I think it's Uganda has... Bah, Uganda is not... Uganda is on it. Too. Yeah, for sure. We, we can't deny that. For sure. For sure. You <laughs> cannot, yeah. We can't deny that. Sure. One. Yeah, that's Build what Ben Saul killed me yesterday. He was like, yo, the nyash. You know? The nyash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the nyash. Yeah, he must been looking at him like, like bro, <laughs> you ain't seen, yeah. seen nothing yet, boy. We're <laughs> 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 imagining yeah. that guy's yeah. recording, but he's like, with that nyash. So you look bad, nyash, you look bad, nyash. He remembered, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, we need We need a project with like a Uganda name when you go back. Absolutely. Mm. Like Absolutely. Nasu Uganda, Nasu 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 Buga. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't pick one of those, bro. I can't pick one of those. For the culture, man. For the culture, bro. Nah, mm. Do you guys have any... I feel like we're all the same, bro. You know, we're all... We come from the same... I don't know how to explain it. You know? There's not much difference from us, man. You come back... You come to Kigali, I'm sure you just like, yo, this is... This is, this is the it's only... Easy. This is fam, you know? Now, we're coming. We're coming. That's it, yeah. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. Nah, no, for real, we're actually coming, bro. Like, Yo, all the time. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Pull up, bro. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, right, man. I feel like that's all I have for today. Do you guys have yeah. anything Same. else? Same. This has been lovely. 
Bro, this was so good, man. This was so Shit, good. We need to get into that. Me, man. <laughs> yeah, we need to do this again for sure. Absolutely. Man. It's our yeah. first podcast, like I said. It's good energy, man. Mm. Mm. Honestly, yes. truly, How long truly. have we done? We've done an hour and eight minutes. An hour and eight? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, that's good, bro. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's it's, good. It's that's good. good. All right, man. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, come for blankets and wine, bro. It's going to be a blast. Absolutely. It's going to be good, Looking bro. That one never misses. Yeah. That one never, ever misses, <laughs> man. Let's do this. So, and you said that Randy's body is coming, right? Yo, Always, bro. You them will be hitting me up. Like, yeah, yeah, come to. Yeah, I've heard a lot of goodies. Yes, I want to wear my Sunday best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come in a suit, man. <laughs> 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 a tie, white shoes. <laughs> like a hat, <laughs> man. Hi, <Yeah. laughs> right, man. Let's do that. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Peace. Peace. Africa, pass unite. <laughs>